In this lesson, I would like to show you how you can use Desmos to enter your data and make it uh, presentable in a lab report. The first thing we must recognize is that when we are in Desmos that we can enter data in, and the way we do that is by creating a little data table. When we click on this plus button here, this plus button drops down and we will see that we can add a data table. Now in any good experiment, the first thing that we will do is we are trying to see if one factor relates to another factor. So what we are going to do is we're going to change this variable known as the independent variable and see if this variable known as the dependent variable will respond. Now, we don't have any data here to work with, so I'm just gonna make some numbers up. So for example, let's say that I had some kind of value of one. And when this value is one, this value is three. And in the experiment, I decided to change up this value and I made it two. And I see that when this value was made into two, then whatever I was measuring also changed to six. And then I changed this to three and this changed to nine. So we see that there seems to be some kind of dependency because whenever I change this, this seems to change with it. Again, I made a final data point here of 412. All right, now what we see is that we have put our data in. Now, what I'd also like to show you is there is a second way rather than manually entering it this way. And I find that this is much more convenient because you can analyze and manipulate stuff before you bring it over. Um, and that is, um, if we were to go to a spreadsheet, let's say, for example, I collected data this way, I could also highlight the data, hit Control C and copy that data, and then bring it over to Desmos and just simply click and Control V or paste it right here. And I see I have a secondary set of data that is showing other points here. Now, for what we're going to do today, I don't wanna show this second one. So I'm gonna just hide it by clicking this button but I just wanted to show you a secondary way to bring over data. So you don't have to actually always type it. You can also bring it over a neat little feature in Desmos. Now, in a lab report, what we would like to be able to do is first of all, view the data. Um, and then what we would like to do is kind of not use all this wasted space. So what we see here is that all of our data here was used in quadrant one, which will probably be the case in most scientific experiments because we don't often work with negative numbers. Um, not to say we don't, but we just don't often do it. So quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four here, there's really no reason to show these. The second thing that we wanna make sure that we do is that um, make sure that we can see all the data points because we can only see three of four at the moment. So we need to fix that a little bit. So we need to scale this properly. Um, and then finally, on any good scientific graph, we should be labeling what these axes are referring to because as of right now, they're just numbers and they need to express what our measurement was and what our responding measurement was. So the way we're going to change this up is real simple. We're just going to focus today on how this wrench works. So when we click on this graph setting, we see that we get a couple of options. Um, this projector mode is actually activated right now. If you take a look at the projector mode, what it does is it basically just makes things bigger and a little bit more viewable. So I'd encourage you that you keep that on. The second thing that we see here is there's a couple options for goods. We don't want to worry about that. We want to worry about what's going on in the X and the Y axis and why we're not seeing everything we want. So first of all, we see that the X axis is ranging from negative 10 to positive 10. So it's going all the way from here to here. We don't need it to do that. We're working only in quadrant one. So we might as well take this number and lower it. I'm going to make it zero so that we don't work with the negative numbers at all. The second thing that I see is I still only have three points and I'm kind of wasting a lot of space here. So on my X values, my range was from one to four. So I really only need to show up that far. There's no reason to go way, uh, way past that. So I'm gonna go just one step beyond. I'm gonna make it five. That will just give me a little bit of extra room for extrapolation if I need. You could go to 10, 15, whatever you like. The second thing, and probably most important, is that I wanna make sure there's a label on this axis. And because it wasn't a, a defined measurement, we're going to call it the independent variable. This independent variable is the variable that we are manipulating, what we're changing, and we're going to see how the other one responds. So now we see independent variable shows here. I look on the y-axis, I need to do the same thing. Uh, again, I'm going to range it from zero because I don't wanna be the negative numbers. And I'm going to see that my y ranges from three to 12. So I need to go at, to at least 12, gotta at least get that far. So I'm going to go to 15. Again, doesn't really matter how far I go out, but that seems reasonable to me. This variable is known as the dependent variable. We are seeing if this variable on this axis depends on what this one is doing. And according to our graph, it does seem to show that. So I'm gonna type in dependent variable. And I now see everything is labeled. And I just wanna make this window go away because I still only see 
three points, and that's because point number four is currently behind the screen here. So when I just click here, it goes away. Now what I see is I have a clearly labeled graph, very important. I have all of my points that I collected are displayed, and I don't have a lot of wasted space. And that was really the goal of today's lesson, to make sure that we can do this. Now there's one final thing that we can do. I will quite often ask for you to provide a screenshot of your graph. Um, and right now, everything is fine, except for the x-axis and the y-axis are right on the border of the um, page. So it's kind of hard to see them. And it's kind of, you have to kind of almost determine that this is the origin for yourself by counting backwards. We can avoid this issue by simply grabbing the graph and moving it just a tiny little bit. And if we do that, it gives us a peak in the quadrants two, three, and four, but we're not really worrying about them. So we now have a graph. We can clearly see our x-axis our y-axis, and all of our data points. I hope that this lesson was helpful in getting you to create the graphs that you will need for your lab report.